quick video. About a year ago, I started messing around with these $100 inverters from Amazon. Mostly I just started testing them, but about eight months ago, I made a video exploring the idea if we could use them with batteries. Now that video got a bunch of views and a lot of you guys order some of these and are trying them. Now the things that I'm hearing from a lot of you is that uh, the fans quit. And so if you run them really hard, then they kind of overheat and then, you know, those units just stop working. So fast forward to today, about a year later, now I have an update on these guys. All right, so here are the two units that I installed about a year ago uh, and I've been using them. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, right as I was leaving for vacation, I realized that they weren't working anymore. And I really didn't have a chance to check them up until yesterday when I went and checked. And yeah, sure enough, they were completely dead. I couldn't get anything out of them. So I took them off and took it apart and started checking them. So here's what I found. This one right here has signs of water. You see how it's, uh, you know, there's some corrosion in there. When you look further inside there, there's more corrosion. I think what happened, these fans right here, they spin fine, right? So it's not the fans, which is a common, a common occurrence on these, they cease or the fans just stop working. These ones seem fine, but what I did was try to plug it into my battery and I got a giant spark, it almost burnt up my uh, plug here. And so this thing is shorted, it's, it's shorted and so all I can think is the reason that it's shorted out is because it has water damage. Somehow in that box where I installed them, their, uh, you know, water got inside. And so it shorted this out, you know, the sun came out while it was still shorted or while it still was wet and then it shorted out, right? So, so this one is dead and, you know, it's my fault for not installing it correctly or in a way that I could protect it from water. It's been raining a whole lot in California about two weeks straight, which is something weird that it's not typical, but you know, then it took its toll on this. Then there's the second one here and this one, get this, this one works. It works, but it doesn't work a hundred percent. This one, ooh, what's going on here? Oh, the batteries. So what I'm actually doing is I'm discharging these batteries here, right? And I'm dumping that energy back into the grid, right? Just to test it out. So it does run, it just runs hot and the fans never turn on, which I took it apart yesterday, just like this. And I tried to spin the fans and of course they wouldn't spin. So I think this one has bad fans, but it hasn't. Uh, burned up, right? Because I, I think I found it in time and I turned it off. And so it hasn't been running for a long time uh, without the fan. So I think what I'm going to do, oh, and the reason why this one wasn't working is because, well, it was uh, just connected in uh, parallel with this guy. And since this one is shorted out, then that means all the panels were not really producing any power. And so this one wasn't getting any power because essentially it's like putting a cable from here to there, you know, from here to positive to negative, short it out. Obviously there's no energy gonna flow into it. And so that's what it is. So 50% of the, actually no, more like 75% of these uh, inverters did not last, outlast a year. I mean, I will be able to get this one running. Again, I'm just gonna swap the fans these guys to here and then this one shot and i'll be like at 50 percent, right but uh yeah definitely that is the verdict these are super cheap right a hundred dollars actually they're a bit more expensive now but when i bought them a year ago they were a hundred dollars uh for a thousand watts and they could do a thousand watts obviously right but they won't last very long if <laughs> you run on my peak uh, I wasn't running a peak. I've been running them somewhere around, you know, and below 600 watts. I think in the summer, you know, at full sun, they were doing about 600 each. Um, or no, 500. That's the max that they could really do, 500. 
So yeah, I've been I've been going, you know. Oh look at that error. What is that? I think maybe the voltage is too low. I think the voltage reached too low. So let's turn that off. Um yeah, so definitely these guys, uh yeah, if they get wet, they will stop working. Uh and you gotta keep an eye on the fans. So so if the fans go off, then you need to change them before they burned up, right? So yeah, I don't know. You kind of get what you pay for, you know, with the hundred dollar inverters. But at this point, because they're so cheap now, they're I think they're like a hundred and fifteen dollars. So of course, what am I gonna do now that uh, these ones stop working? Well, I actually did replace them with new ones. All right, here we go. I just changed the uh, fans here. All right, these are the bad ones. They don't spin at all. Look at that. They're totally done. Uh, hooked it up to that battery there. All right, so 25 amps out of the battery pack. Yeah, that battery pack is struggling. Uh, 25 amps, so that's, uh, what is that? Ooh, so I'm maxing out that pack right there. I'm pulling up more than 4 amps out of there, so probably won't be able to do that too long because then the fuses might start blowing but i just need these things to start the fans to start to see if uh this is going to be a 100 percent working unit and here we go finally the fans have turned on these fans are probably not gonna cut it they're probably old oh yeah, they're making those funky noises. I think I'm gonna order some online as replacements for these guys. All right, so you're going to need a fan uh, that is 40 by 40 by 20, somewhere around 20 millimeters. That's the thickness, right? I'm uh, looking on Amazon, and this one seems to be like the best one because you get a little bit more, it's 28 millimeters. There's enough room inside the... There's enough room inside the unit uh, to allow the extra depth. And the only thing is that it's about $8. So you will probably need two of them, right? And so you're looking at about $16. Uh, if you have, obviously, uh, Amazon Prime, then you can get it, you know, free delivered. And you can get this very, very quickly. Now, if you don't want to pay that much, and uh you know and you don't mind waiting then of course you could always just go over to aliexpress this is uh a platform in china and they have stuff you know way cheaper right so i couldn't really find they sell them in lots of like 10 uh because it's such a cheap item right so i found this one's for five pieces uh for 10.49 right so they come out to about two dollars and 40 cents and these ones are identical to what you're removing there, including the little connector. Uh, and so these should be a direct replacement, except it'll take a while. There's free shipping. Is it free shipping? Let me see. Yeah, free shipping to the United States, right? But estimated deliver about 15 days. So yeah, if you're in no rush, I'd say you order these and you just forget about it. And then in a couple of weeks, you get it. You put them in there, replace them and then you're set to go. All right, so again, this is just a quick update on the purchase of the cheap $123, $24 now, a uh, 1000 watt grid tie inverter from uh, Amazon. Coming up next, I will be uh, testing this guy right here. I've been, I bought one of these guys and I'm going to, uh, well, just put it through spaces install it you know i think i'm gonna try and run this one off of batteries uh because this one you can throttle it down and that was a problem with these other cheapy ones so yeah i'll be able to uh give you guys an update and see how if these are worth these are a little bit more about three thousand three hundred dollars and i think you can find these cheaper on aliexpress too so yeah stay tuned for that video and all the other mini videos that i owe you guys with all the other stuff including our main power wall built here. I'm still testing a ton of stuff. 
somehow I am going back. I'm still exploring with the use of these guys because it just makes it a lot easier to put it together and to run all the wiring when you don't have stuff sticking out. The space is really tight in here and so doing it this way uh, it has a lot of benefits. But of course, now we have to find good quality of these guys that are also cheap and that's what I'm doing. So I'm still exploring that as well as using the... Uh, as well as using the flat ones like this so that when you install them, then they don't stick out very much, right? So you end up using more cable like this, but then you gain all that space that you lose when you build them this way, right? These things are sticking past that and then the cable. So it just adds a ton of more room this way and uh, in certain applications that might get in the way and a lot of them depending on what box you're going to use so all that's coming uh stay tuned for those videos and i want to thank you for watching this video and for all your support see you guys on the next one bye